So I was thinking to myself, today I'd like to get spectacular shots of hummingbirds chasing each other and attacking each other and smashing together and doing acrobatic stuff. So I set up my camera in front of the most popular bird feeder we've got. I also have lots of light. And then it started to rain. But that's not bad because I got some cool shots of raindrops coming down. And sometimes hummingbirds in front of them. So I got the camera all set up. And I waited and I waited and I waited. And then here came two hummingbirds from two different angles. And I pressed record and they crashed together and chirped and squawked. And feathers flew everywhere. Feathers didn't really fly everywhere. But I got the most epic shot I think that I've ever gotten in my life. And then as I sat there and watched it play back on the recording, I had an empty bird feeder with no birds in slow motion. I wondered if I was losing my mind. Of course, if I had just read the instructions in the first place, I could have saved myself a lot of drama because it says right there how the shit works. Because once you understand how this works, you'll be able to get epic shots like this. So the first thing you'll want to do is set up your camera so that you can squeeze every drop of slow motion out of it. You'll press the menu button and scroll to slow and quick. Press enter on that. Go into super slow motion. Press enter right there. Then you'll set up three different parameters. First thing you want to do is go into record format and set that to 24p. Next go into the frame rate and set that for 960 frames per second. The last thing to do is go into record timing and set that to end trigger. This is crucial. With all these settings the camera will take 960 frames per second and then play them back at 24 frames per second. You don't have to do anything else to it. Once you save that video and play it back, it'll play back in slow motion. Next, set your camera to manual mode because SQ doesn't work in automatic. In super slow motion, the only thing the camera does for you is set the shutter speed to a minimum amount. Everything else you'll have to set yourself, including focus, white balance, ISO, and the iris. I'm not going to go into how to set the white balance because I've already got a video on that. I'll put a link to it at the end of this video. I'll show you how to set everything else up now. Since the zoom button on the top still works, I just leave it where it is and use the ring on the lens to set the focus. You want to set your zoom so you've got the size of the picture where you want it. Then focus the camera right where you think the action is going to happen. In this case, I focused my camera about an inch behind the bird feeder. Now go into super duper slow motion by pressing the S and Q button twice. Your screen should look like this. Now here's what to do with the manual variables. I'll press the iris button and scroll up and down with the joystick until you get into the fives or so. That'll give you a larger depth of field so you don't have fuzzy hummingbirds when they decide not to fly one inch behind your feeder. Now turn on your zebras, then use the ISO button to set your exposure. Zebras will help you get it perfect. So press the ISO button and then use the joystick to go up and down until your exposure is right where you want it. When you get it where you want it, press enter. Now you wait for the hummingbirds and get ready to press the record button. But here's the catch. You don't press record until after the action has already happened. Here's what happens. You press the record button and it starts to play back on the screen the scene that you just recorded. It starts back from three seconds ago and starts working its way through it.
After you've gotten through the action that you want to record, if you want to stop it right there and save it, you press the enter button. And it'll quit right there and reset itself so that you can grab some more action. So what this has to mean is that the camera is recording all the time. And when you press record, you're just telling it to grab what it just recorded already and save that. Oh, I get it. When all you have to do is stand there and miss the shot, then press record, it sends a bad message to our youth. It's almost like a participation trophy. But it makes getting incredible footage a lot easier. Consider the implications. 